as I was working on my first like big mixtape, uh, rap phenomenon, that was like what kind of got me known as a DJ in New York. And uh, yeah, it was like, you literally saw me in my very, very first stages of, of kind of getting into what it is I want to do. Absolutely. You know, you, we speak about, and I was going to bring this up, so we might as well start here. But Rap Phenomenon, it was you and probably one of my favorite DJ, favorite blend DJs. Um, I managed Dirty Harry for many years of his early career. So you and Dirty Harry have like a classic mixtape. Like the Rap Phenomenon, Biggie and Tupac was incredible. Yeah, yeah. Green Leonard actually joined us on, on that second one. But yeah. Uh, it was an honor, man. I, I was such a fan of Dirty Harry, and uh, I, I met him in a strip club, actually. I was DJing this really uh, lame, <laughs> failing strip club uh, on Coney Island Boulevard in Brooklyn. And uh, a friend of ours just got brought him by that night, and I was like, oh, shit, Dirty Harry, like, you're doing what it is I want to do. Like, you're, you're the hot blend DJ. I want to be the hot blend DJ. And I just stayed on him and harassed him until he agreed to do this project with me, and, you know. It worked out. That's dope. I mean, I, I like that you br brought that up because that's something, it, and just so you know, our audience, it, it, it's, it's really entrepreneurs and people who are seeking success. And I like the fact that you say that you stayed on them until he agreed to do this mixtape. At the time, Dirty Harry is Dirty Harry. I got to believe if you're DJing in the strip club, you weren't necessarily the, vet, the Vlad that the world knows you as right now. No, no. Uh, Harry had no idea who I was. I mean, I'll be honest. Like, he, he had never heard my name. He had never, you know, I was, I had moved from California to New York maybe about nine months previously. And uh, I was just trying to make my name uh, in the Mecca of mixtapes at, at the time. And uh, yeah, I was completely unknown. Nobody, nobody knew who I was at all. And through just constant harassment, he finally was like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll do it with you. Like, just put my name second, like, uh, you know, whatever. And, uh, to, to everyone's surprise, it, it did really well, and it helped both of us out. Now, that's a classic mixtape. Didn't you guys win an award at the Just Show Mixtape Awards for it? Uh, we we did. Yeah, yeah, we won. What, what, what did we win? I think the, I think for the, the Tupac one, we won Mixtape of the Year. I just and remember was, you guys winning an award for it. I'm not sure what the award was. Yeah, but. yeah. Won, we won Mixtape of the Year for the second. I don't think we won for the Biggie one, but I think we were nominated for the Biggie one, but then we won uh, for the, oh, the Tupac, Tupac one. Re rest in peace, Justo. That was, that was quite a loss. Yeah, uh, Justo phase on. Um, shout out to him and rest in peace. Uh, incredible within the music industry and especially toward the mixtape DJs of those days. Yeah, uh, yeah. He brought a real award show to a very underground uh, art form, which nobody else was even remotely thinking of doing, um, you know, which you kind of, I almost feel like you took the Justo torch and carried on in Absolutely. your own way, you know what I'm saying, uh, with your award show. But um, yeah, man, it, it worked out dope, um, you know, and then I ended up doing something called Rock Phenomenon with Rock Raider uh, of the Executioners. It was a, it was a, a rock mashup mixtape, and that won the award for best mashup uh, the year later. A year later, and that was the last Justo's mixtape awards because he he died from a car accident. I think a few months after that. Yeah, I remember. I was actually at that um, the last Justo mixtape award, and um, I won't get too far off topic, but I'll never forget because he, you know, Justo was a great friend of mine, and um, I wanted to see those awards excel. And every year they kept getting bigger and bigger. And I remember the last year he did it. It was at BB um, King's in New York City, um, nah. Town Square. And um, I bought Diddy by BB King's was the night before. After that, it was like a bigger venue. It was at the bigger venue. Oh, I bought yeah, Diddy yeah. by by the the BB King's one. It was the last year he did it. Which... Yeah, yeah, he did BB King's. And the next year, it was a much bigger venue. I forgot. I forgot what it was. The Manhattan, the Manhattan Center, or something like that. It was, but it was big. Like he he had really no. He kept growing it. He kept growing. Yeah, he kept growing. You know, it's interesting, right? In in this is an important part of your story because people should understand where they start out is not necessarily where they're going to end off. Yeah. You're a guy, your, your name is Vlad for a reason. It's, it's, it's Ukrainian. You're, 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 you're actually born in a Ukraine, correct? 
Right. Well, it used to be the Soviet Union at the time. Okay. okay. Russia, essentially, uh, you know, years later after I moved, the countries kind of broke apart and mm -hmm. Ukraine became its own uh, independent country. But at the time, I was Russian. Uh, I was part of Russia. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I came over to the U.S. at four years old. And, you know, when you talk about you don't end up where you start, I went to UC Berkeley. I was a computer science major. Um, I started off as a computer programmer for like about a couple of years, realized that wasn't for me. Then I went into, um, I started my own technical recruiting company. Like I would actually help, you know, high-end engineers find jobs in all these uh, kind of dot-com companies that were popping up. And uh, I, I was, that was like kind of my first real company. And that was doing well. And then the dot-com crash happened. And it completely wiped out my business. I just bought a big house. I had a band and all this other type of stuff. And uh, once again, I totally switched gears again and decided, hey, you know, here's me being out of work and my company's down, you know, shut down. Let me try to pursue DJing, something I've always been passionate about. And once again, I switched careers. Like, you know, and then, you know, later on, I started doing DVDs. And I started doing Vlad TV. So it, it's, there's been a lot of twists and turns along the way you know, my traditional path that I started on, I should still be a computer programmer to this day. And I'm very far from it, but but I'll tell you that going to Berkeley and learning about computer science and, and working as a programmer has allowed my company to function the way it has. Like if I didn't go through all that, Vlad TV would not be nearly as successful because I don't think people understand how complicated the back end is in terms of what we do. We put out so many clips a day. We put out seven, sometimes as many ten, as 10 clips a day because we have such a complex system in the back end that I've been developing with my programmer for 10 years. And that, that's kind of the whole thing. You'll have twists and turns, but you'll learn everything. You'll learn something from each step that'll help you later on. I love that you're bringing this up, Vlad. Um, you hit on so many points, and I'm trying to remember as we're going because... Again, we started out with, and, and I have to say this, and I reiterate this in so many of my interviews, just because you're starting one place, it doesn't mean that you're going to end up like, God has us on this journey. And every experience we go through, even if we can't see the benefit in real time, it's never wasted time. You're talking about, graduating UC Berkeley as a computer programmer and how you've switched careers three, four, five times, but how what you learned back as a teenager has helped you to create this multi-million dollar business. I love that you told this story. So I think people need to hone in and understand, number one, there's no wasted experiences. I don't care what you're going through. You're going through it for a reason, and at some point in your life, that experience is probably going to come to help benefit you. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.